so we're starting a little tour going around a few Beatles related places in Liverpool just covering the main ones there's plenty of more obscure ones but these are just a few main ones this first one here is the Crown Plaza Hotel as you might tell by the look of it this was once Liverpool Speak Airport this is uh, this just has the Beatles connection when the Beatles were photographed coming in for the Hard Day's Night premiere they flew in and it's a uh, few famous pictures with the fans on the far side of the airport up on the balcony on the viewing area the welcome home signs um, I've actually stayed in this hotel twice before it's very nice very art deco as you can see and take a walk around the other side to the runway side of the hotel if you like let's have a look from around there I'm still in close proximity to the new John Lennon airport just a bit further up the other side to speak that way. Uh, a few remnants of the history of this hotel is the Liverpool Airport scattered on the car park. This is where the planes would have taxied in this more or less in this car park. Obviously the land where the runway was has been taken over by industry. And there's the viewing area where the fans were gathered when the flight came in with the, for the Hard Day's Night premiere in 64. Uh, if you can imagine, all the green barriers have been holding back thousands of screaming teenagers. So we are on Fourth Lynn Road, Liverpool and Speak. <coughs> Outside the proud family home of the McCartney family, Jim, Mary, Paul and Mike. They do do tours of the house, but uh, unfortunately not on a Monday and Tuesday. And it's Monday today, so we can't, can't go in today. But this is the family home where McCartney lived. Fourthland Road. Shame, would have liked to have gone in just to see, uh, to see what it's like. I mean, there's plenty of pictures online, but still not quite the same. So many songs were apparently uh, had the genesis in this house. Nice, right, so we've got here now. Strawberry Fields. Not the best timing. <laughs> Because the, the busload on the magical mystery tour have just pulled up. There's the magical mystery tour bus down there. It's that's a that's a newer looking coach to the one we did. It. We did it, yeah. it when we done it. It was a replica of the the '67 yeah. bus. Doing a lot of renovation work in Strawberry Fields. Oh, they'll have a new authentic exhibition on the place, the song and John Lennon's early life around Strawberry Field. Cafe and landscape down now, so it could be a nice place to visit then because it's just the just the actual gates otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of work going on in there. So he's written Billy Shears. Oh yeah, Billy Shears. Billy Shears. Alright, so that's Strawberry Fields ticked off. Yay! Next one. In St Peter's Church. The Walton Fate was held here with in uh, 
1957 with the quarrymen were playing and where Paul McCartney was in the crowd that day more interested in the music than anything else going on in the feet they met up later and the rest is history as they say just inside here is this grave trying to not walk on other people's don't like doing that lost sight of it now is it oh here it is it's right in front of me John Rigby and further down on the stone is one Eleanor Rigby Sir Paul McCartney's sort of some heard something sort of poetic in the name or perhaps that would have been just the name of everyday person all the lonely people although to be fair she doesn't look as if she was too lonely got a few people mentioned on that stone yeah. okay so that's St Peter's Church on to the next stop and the house that John Lennon spent most of his youth in with his Aunt Mimi down on Men Love Avenue You come in? <laughs> Quick stop here Missed Missed her on the first pass but this is the childhood home of John Lynn and again it's closed on Monday and Tuesday, same as the 4th Lynn Road house. But there's the park, John Lennon, 1940s to 1980, musician, songwriter, lived here from 1945 to 1963 with Aunt Mimi and Uncle George, till Uncle George died. Uh, Aunt Mimi, I believe, lived in this house till John bought her a house and stood down in Poole in Dorset and she went down there to live. Probably not so much of the Beatles stuff practiced here so often probably, but this was the home of John Lennon. So we've come to the bottom of the famous lane come down here to stop and get a picture of the sign we stopped we stopped here before and the first time we came they had the sign there if you remember the second time we came the sign was painted on the wall because people get pinched in the sign <laughs> but we're back with the sign now thankfully barber shop Barber shaved another customer. Customer. Oh. And there's the, the bus stop in the middle of the roundabout to the bus stop, yeah. pretty nurse selling poppies in a tray. From the bus stop in the middle of the roundabout. Twelve. No, yeah. Number one, the one with the bike outside. It's Twelve Arnold Grove. That's uh, George Harrison's childhood home till they moved to they moved to the Speak area of the city down down by the airport I yeah, won't stay too long because we're sort of uh, copping on to the end of somebody's uh, tour but the statue of Elna Rigby by Tommy Steele of all people Good, actually, isn't yeah. it? Feed the birds. 